Uh, the best thing I achieved in my life was to captain England, which is my country. So uh, I would say that's my career highlight. I had just a fear of getting to the stage where it was the number one company and I knew it was number one. So again, uh, winning, um, but being recognised by other people. So I guess recognition, um, you know, people talk about money these days, but actually, I don't know, winning, being recognised to me is more important than the money. You, you get it from other people, but actually it comes from within yourself, this will, desire to win. I mean, in my sport, what is the point of playing? A competitive sport if you don't want to win but uh, once you've won something as well like a league title it, it makes you want more you don't think oh I've achieved that and yeah that's, that's so true yeah sometimes you can see somebody their morale's gone down um, they're not working so hard and the natural reaction is you actually want to give them a hard time you want to shake them but, but often the, the confidence has gone so you actually have to do the reverse from a management point of view you feel like kicking them, but you actually have to pick them up and make them see the vision again, so you can make them believe in themselves as well. Well, every, every character is different, but you know, you, you find there's some players who respond to being told it exactly the way it is. You know, yeah, this, hey, this is what you're doing, this is what you're not doing, and this is why you're where you are. And that guy or girl, if it's a football team with a girls' team, they get it. Other guys, you've got to go there and just. <laughs> tread very carefully because they're just one step away from just downing tools completely and you probably need them. You know, you, you can't buy another player till the end of the season. So sometimes you've got to just keep them there. But in your mind probably as a manager, certainly for me, you'd made your mind up that maybe they would be surplus to requirements in the future because they couldn't handle that or they couldn't do this or they didn't want to do that. So, you know, uh, sometimes you, you've got to just paper over the cracks Yep. And then, you know, when the time's right for both of you, it's maybe best to split. Well, I started at a club in the fourth division, we hardly ever won a game. So I knew what it was like to be a loser. You know, even if you played well, you know, we, we used to play well and get beat 3-0. So when you start to win, it's something that maybe you just want to keep hold of. It's, it, it just gives you a buzz. And, and somehow, once you've won something, you feel like you can do it again. You know, I've been there, I've done that, I've sort of got the t-shirt. And that helped us at Liverpool. You know, we, we won the league three times in six years, but we finished second. We knew how to win, we knew how to win, and uh, we knew what it take, took because we'd done it before. So I think that's called experience, I guess. You know, we, 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 um, we had a lot of experienced players in the end, and we're almost unbeatable then. And then you get old, and you have to rebuild again, you know, in our game. And so, same thing in business, you know, when a person joins the business, you want them to get some wins. And the more wins they get, then the confidence builds. And exactly as Kevin says, it, it, success breeds success. And if you're actually succeeding, you want more of it. And the confidence grows, right? And the confidence grows and grows in what you're doing. Then of course, again, that gives you the reinforcement to want more, more success. So, same principle. Best advice I ever got was from a, a, a man called Bill Shankly, and he just said, always give 100%. It, you, you can have a bad day and give 100%, but it, if you don't give 100%, it's a bad day anyway. So, you know, you play hard, fast, do everything you think you can do in a football team, and it just does that, and you can get beat 3-0. But as long as you know, when you walk off the pitch and you go in the shower, I give it everything I got. So, 100%. He never really accepted people going out there and going through the motions. And if he didn't go through the motions, would he...? Uh... Yeah, I'm afraid you won't be around very long. <laughs> <laughs> I, can remember, I can remember when I started off getting a, a name because I came from nowhere and suddenly, you know, I was getting contracts from Fabergé, and, you know, which was aftershave and boots. And Bill Shankly, <laughs> give you an idea of his leadership, he didn't come over and say, you're doing too much. And, and sort of give me a rollicking because he, he, he just came over and said that it's going well son isn't it he's Scottish I said great he said you're enjoying it I said yeah he said just remember the contract that is the main one in other words your football keep your football right and they'll all keep coming oh leadership, leadership is setting an example um, and, and you know I'm sure Shankly was in there early and finishing late as lots of the top people are so leadership is it's literally as it says leading from the front uh, but also you have to have a confidence and you need to be decisive uh, a decision is better than no decision 
So people like a leader that can make those decisions and, and be decisive. Leaders are people who you want to follow, you know, and learn from. And in, if you do that properly, you become a leader yourself, you know. So it, it's a, they're taking a direction because a lot of people don't know where they want to go. They want to go somewhere, but they don't know where they want to go to Italy, Spain, France or whatever. The leader says, this is, this is what I'm going to do. This is where we're going. And Bill Shankly did that all the time, keeping us focused on what we had to do. So he was a great mentor for me. He was a leader. He wasn't a manager. He was a leader. It's, there's a difference. I mean, there are so many in business, aren't they, that, that you look at and you admire. Uh, so I'd go back even to Anassis, you know, I'd go back mm. to those eras and uh, look at those people that did it in what we'd say were tough times, but they actually found opportunities, kept their positivity and, and found opportunities where everybody else said there was none. Visionaries, weren't they? Visionary, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they could see. Could see the future. <laughs> a lot of people can see the hill, and yeah. they, they, they oh, yeah, were already yeah, looking they're, over they're it. They were already looking know? over it. Uh, uh, I think uh, I worked with Mr. Fayed at uh, Harrods when I was Fulham manager, and he was a visionary. He, you know, you could see why he got the, the Harrods thing going, because he always was just chipping away, saying, you know, what about this? Uh, you know, just trying to push you a little bit out of your comfort zone at times, but it made sense, you know, have you thought of this, have you thought of that? He, he, was, he was a leader in a different way. And you need to come out of your, the comfort zone as well to be successful. Mm. Um, so we all get in comfort zones. Uh, we have to realise in order to be successful, you've got to push yourself that little bit further, which is, is, is probably going to hurt. Um, and it's definitely, as the word says, going to feel uncomfortable. So, uh, but you get growth. The only way you get growth is actually putting yourself in a position where you do feel uncomfortable. Hard working guy. Three words, isn't it? Enthusiastic, energetic, and confident.